And one was a story in his church. Where in Sunday school, they were teaching the children about Jesus and the cross. They showed the children a picture of Jesus on the cross. And a little girl, perhaps five years old, said, He's not on the cross anymore. And the teacher said, really, why do you say that? She said, it turned out this little girl's father, and she was with us. Her father was burning. She was with us. And the little girl said, because I know my father, child of mine, Jesus was holding, holding me. <laughs>
accepting that everything doesn't always work out. I spoke to a man who uh, was going through terrible troubles, terrible marriage troubles, family troubles. And he said, I want us to be happy. I want us to have a happy year. It isn't working out. That's part of the tragedy of life. He could desperately, sincerely want to have a good marriage. His wife could desperately, sincerely, honestly want to have a good marriage. God wants them to be happy in their Christian marriage. All of those may want that thing that is good. This is very not good. The baggage they brought, their own sinful natures, they may have to face the reality while staying together. But life isn't a bold journey. There are blessings, but there are always problems. And this blessing of the poor in spirit is partly accepting that and realizing that. Not liking it, perhaps, but acknowledging it. There, there is a liberation in recognizing your own faults and the unhappy realities of this world. There is a liberation in it. To not have to pretend that everything's all right. That's part of the blessing of a poor spirit. Poverty of spirit. Part of a blessing of humility over your own faults and over the broken world. Part of the blessing is learning to live and rely on God for your happiness and strength. And accepting that some things, good things, are not going to work out. But it's worse pretending everything's all right. In Russia, after the fall of communism in the 1990s, I was in Moscow. And several people told me that the worst part about the Soviet Union wasn't the poverty or the inefficiency or the oppression the worst part, one Russian after another told me about communism was having to pretend it was good. And they could, they could give it up and live you know, with the uncertainty and insecurity of democracy that was preferable to living that lie of living in a miserable system, an oppressive system, and having to pretend it was the best system on earth. Living with a lie, living with a myth that everything was okay, when they all knew it wasn't. They told me about the 1950s, they would gather in their rooms after dinner, and whisper about how terrible things were, each other, they couldn't say in public that they'd be arrested. So they were willing to give up the security and certainty of communism and go into the freedom, the uncertainty of freedom and democracy to just be able to be honest, even about what was not good. And that's part of the blessing of poor in spirit is that you can admit that not everything is right except in Christ. But in this world, not everything is going to be right. And we don't have to pretend it is. It's greatly liberating. To admit that you are a sinner, fallen from God, rebellious to God, still struggling, still struggling with sin, even after you've come to Christ, as Paul did when he said, I do the things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things I want to do. There's a war going on between 
my spirit and my faith. To be able to admit that to God, to mourn over that, to feel sorry, to weep over that evil and our own helplessness, our own inability to correct it. That is happiness because it leads us to the truth, which is that we rely wholly on God. We depend wholly on the grace of God. And we trust in Him, as God said to Paul, My grace is sufficient. Paul, a great evangelist, all your efforts, all your holiness is not sufficient. You'll never do it on your own. But God said, don't worry, Paul. My grace is sufficient. In the midst of that struggle, that's what it means that you're blessed when you're poor in spirit. But you're blessed when you're sad. It's all right to be sad. This miserable world, it's a necessity, it's inevitable. And that truth will set us free. Free to know God's forgiveness in Christ. To know that His grace is sufficient because He took the penalty for our sin. He took the punishment for our sins. He died on that cross. He's not on that cross. But He died on that cross. A man without sin because He was God. And took the punishment our sin deserves. Death and hell. So we have forgiveness of our sin. Eternity in heaven through His righteousness. And the comfort of the Holy Spirit right now who dwells within believers. So this Lord's Supper we're about to celebrate. The bread and the cup. The body and the blood of Christ. That bought us that salvation. That gives us the hope and the joy in the midst of that sadness, in the midst of that sorrow, that life hasn't worked out in a lot of ways, and it's not going to. But in Christ, in spirit, it can be perfect in the midst of this imperfect world. That without the body and blood of Christ, we couldn't have it. So, receive this. Remember that that's what this Holy Communion means, is our salvation. It's the way we've gotten forgiveness. It's the way His grace is sufficient. It's the way you will be happy even though you're poor in spirit, you're humble and sad. Because as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup. After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. If the deacons were to serve the Lord's Supper up here will come forward, I will serve them for